Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Faster Auto Keys here, and in today's video we're going to show you how to turn your old, worn, and sometimes damaged key into a brand new looking key using a replacement key shell. If you are interested, we have these available on our website with and without a cutting service available, and with and without a chip inside. If you want a cutting service, all you have to do is send us a photo of the key blade, something like this, where we're able to make a copy and we can send you a key with a cutting service so you do not have to go anywhere, drive anywhere, or pay a ridiculous amount of money to have it cut. In this video, we're going to show you how to open your old key, remove the chip that is inside, and place it into a new case so you have a brand new looking key. This tutorial is specific for the 2010 and up Volkswagen keys. If you have an older version where the top separates from the bottom, we'll provide a video link below in the description for this type of key. And we also have these for sale on our website. There are several tools that will be needed to transfer the chip from this old key into a brand new case. If you take a look right here, there is a pin, and this pin does a very good job holding this key together. One thing you will need is a small pin, something like this, where you can place it over the pin, and on top of that, you will need a hammer or something you can hit the pin, which will be needed later in the video. The next thing you will need is a small Phillips head screwdriver, and on top of that, you will need a regular sized flathead screwdriver. The last two things that are needed is a plastic bag which will help you a lot when you are opening the old key and the very last tool is a, something like this. These are called circlip pliers and what happens is that when you close the handle it opens instead of closes. If you don't have a tool like this I'll provide a link below in the description to the exact same thing and if you do not have this tool or do not want to buy one Continue watching the video, maybe you'll have something similar that will allow you to change the chip from the old key to have a brand new looking key. The first thing you will need to do is remove the battery that is inside the key. If you ever changed the battery before, you will already be familiar with this step. If not, it's very easy. There's this little indentation right there where you can place a flathead screwdriver and this back cover will come off exposing the battery. There we go, we now have the battery exposed, ready to come off. And at this point, you can go ahead and use your flathead screwdriver and just try to pry the battery out of the spots. And do not be alarmed, it is very common that the battery just flies out like it's trying to run away from you. There we go, the battery flew out, but we officially have it outside of the key. If you want to change the battery for any reason, it uses a CR2032 battery. Now that the battery is removed, we're going to go ahead and focus on the pin that is right here. What you will have to do is just slightly hit the pin a few times so that the pin, the outside of the pin, the very end, is no longer aligned with the rest of the case. You just want it to slightly go inside you do not want to hit it too hard and you're going to see in this tutorial that i'm not going to hit it very much but it's just going to be enough that the pin goes inside and is no longer aligned with the rest of the key case i'm going to go ahead and use this little guy right here i'm going to place it on the pin and get a good grip on it and then i'm going to hit it just a few times with this hammer so the pin can go inside and take a note, this is a small pin, a very small hammer. If you're using a larger hammer, you might have to hit it a lot less in order to get the pin inside. I'm going to take a look. And this pin is already at the point where I want it to be. 
it is no longer on the outside with the rest of the case and as you can tell I only hit it a few times and now the pin is exactly where I want it to be. If you do not do this with the pin you're going to have such a hard time trying to open this key case because the pin is doing its job of keeping the two pieces together. With the pin pressed in place there is one more step you can do to make this as easy as possible but you can skip it if you want. There is this blade right here and what we're going to do is remove this blade. If you open it you can tell that there is a pin right there and what you will need to do is hit it out of its spot which will release the blade and if you are buying a replacement key shell without a cutting service you will need to do this to transfer the blade from your original key into the new key as you are not going to have the blade on the new key cut and the reason why we're going to remove this blade in this particular case is that once the blade is out of the way there is a gap right here that is much larger and in order to open this key this tool that I will be using for example can go into that gap which will be much easier for it to go all the way inside so that the key can open easier I'm going to go ahead and go through this process so you can get an idea and see if that's something that you want to do There we go, as you can see this pin has been released and now we're going to remove this and you're going to see very simply the blade comes out. Now that we have the blade removed, as you can tell right here as we flip this end, this will give you right here the best grip with your tool so the two halves will separate as easily as possible. If you want to remove the blade, that is up to you. I have removed it with the blade. It's just simply a lot easier when the blade is off and you have this angle to pop the two halves apart. And if you are going to order the key without a cutting service, you will have to remove the blade anyway. Okay, with all of that in place, whether you decide to remove the blade or not, this key is ready to be opened and I like to use a bag just to keep any pieces of the flip blade mechanism from getting lost and we are now ready to open it with this tool I'm gonna to go through the process and it does require some force but it's nothing too crazy and I have done this with over 50 keys and all of them have been successful I have never damaged a remote and I am showing you this video because this is the easiest the most effective and the fastest way that I have found to open this key. Alright, I'm going to zoom out the camera, I'm going to show you the process, and again, I'm going to do this in the bag, and you'll get an idea of how this key is going to open. There we go, we now have the key open, and it does sound a little scary, but this is the safest way to do it. Like I mentioned, I've done this so many times, and it works consistently, and if you follow all the steps that I showed you in the video, including the removal of the blade, just to get a better grip, you will open yours exactly the same way, and you can now look at the inside of your key. And for your convenience, the new replacement key shell will already be open, so it will be easy for you to transfer the chips into the new key. So what we're going to do is now do the easy part of transferring this remote into this new case. So we're going to go ahead and move everything out of the way as we're only going to focus on this. And to remove the keyless remote, the easiest way that I have found to do it is to just grab right here where the battery will fit in place wiggle it a little and the remote comes off now that you have the remote removed all you're going to do is align it and the best way to do it is to have this side to go in first and you want to align the panic button 
with this panic button to make everything fit perfectly. As you can tell, I put this side in first and then I slid the top part into place and now the panic button is aligned perfectly and it works just fine. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and place the rest of the key back together. With the keyless remote inside the case, you are now ready to put everything back together with the screw that came with the package as the very last thing to do. Follow along and this will be a tutorial on how to get the flip blade to work and put everything back together in place. First thing you will have to do is place this arm of the flip blade mechanism right here the way it sits on this part of the key case. With that in place, if you have the button and the spring separate, Take a look at the spring and you will notice that one end has a little end right here that sticks out. All you want to do is put this end of the spring inside the button and turn it until it kind of locks in place and you feel some tension. This will mean that the button is ready. With the spring inside, if you take a look at the button, there are three arms. There are two on each side and there is one on the top that is higher than the others. What you want to do at this point is place this button inside the key case that has the arm. Take a look right here in the arm and you will see that this button with the three arms will slide in place exactly where it needs to be. You will find that there is one section where the top part, the top arm will slide in and you will know you did a good job if the button completely sticks out on the other side of the key. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to look and I can tell that the arm needs to go in right there. It is now perfectly in place and if we look, the button is sticking out so this button is all the way inside the way it's supposed to. We're going to go ahead and get the other half and we're going to get the flip blade mechanism to work. If you take a look right here, there is a little section that is sticking out and this is very important with the spring that has a little end that also sticks out. What you're going to do now is to get to this end of the spring, get it along the same end of this part right here that's elevated, and you're going to give this one complete rotation, and then you snap the case back together. So check this out. As you can tell, the spring is in place. We're going to do one complete rotation. You now have it in place and what you want to do is close the top part first and work your way towards the bottom. Now we can go ahead and test and make sure that it works and it works just fine. The flip blade works well and everything is good to go. If for any reason you have an issue with your key, you can use the spring from your original key as well as the button. Once you make sure the key is in place and there are no gaps where it needs to be pressed together, you can go ahead and place the battery inside. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. All you need to do is slide the battery into place at an angle and that is all that you have to do. You want to go ahead and get the back cover and just simply press it in place. Make sure everything is closed in on both sides and now the last step is to put this screw inside the key and that will be it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and now that everything is put together, go ahead and test the key. So you can tell there's a light. All the buttons work. Very easy to press and you now have a brand new looking key with your original chip inside. That is the end of this tutorial. I hope this helped you out in your situation. If you don't already have a replacement key, check out the link below in our store. We have these available with and without a chip and with and without a cutting service. This key will have a cutting service, but if you do not order with a cutting service, 
As mentioned previously, you just transfer the blade from your old key to the new key and everything will be good to go. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below or text our support number. As mentioned already, the links are in the description. I hope this tutorial helped you out greatly and that you have a good one. Thank you.